Hello, everybody, and welcome to You're on Fire, a Pokemon Unite podcast hosted by me, Spraggles, your resident content cowboy here. Yee-haw. I have an exciting podcast for everyone today because the AOS Cup is coming up. I'm about to fly out to foggy London town. Doob Snacks will be flying out there as well. And I have Bacon and Kello here who will be doing the open bracket stream for the AOS Cup. This is going to be Extremely exciting. Big shout out to this podcast sponsor, G Fuel. You can find the link in the description to get 20% off or use my promo code Spraggles. Thank you, G Fuel. I love you, buddy. Sorry I was drinking a coffee at the start of this podcast, but I really do love you. Uh, Kello, thank you so much for being here. What are you excited for with the AOS Cup? Everything. I'm uh, excited that we have our first in-person event for the year. Excited to see the teams. Excited that we get an open bracket. Um, yeah, I just just everything. Yeah, and Bacon, how you doing, dude? What are you excited about? I'm doing great again, like we said. How can you not be excited when we get the second broadcast? But also for me, it is like a little mini worlds, isn't it? Because we've got so many different nations, different regions turned up, not only because of the teams that qualified, but the open bracket, we've seen so many international teams fly out for this, which is so cool. Yeah, and Doob Snacks, what's got you excited, brother? Well, obviously the international play, obviously the fact that we're covering more games, it's always better, but selfishly, since I'll be there in person, I'm excited for the crowd because uh, it's, a, it's a real difference maker for the teams, for us, um, and it really uh, shows the life that Unite has behind it. Oh yeah, dude, the live events are so exciting. Shout outs to everyone who shows up and goes crazy because you have no idea how hype, if you haven't been there, you have no idea how hype a Unite audience is, especially compared to all of the other games. Like, it's so fun seeing it in person. VGC, TCG, it's all great, but a lot of it's a golf clap. And Pokemon Unite is like people jumping up and cheering for the things that are happening, which is so freaking awesome. I absolutely love it. Of course, if you see us there, please come say hi. We would love to meet all of you. I want to talk a bit about these two broadcasts because this has been... When I heard about this, this was like one of the things I was most excited for for this event. You know, we have so many games to cover. And oftentimes when you get to an official broadcast for Unite, there are so many amazing things that we have missed. You know, we'll be getting texts right before a broadcast or we'll be watching, you know, like Chris Hero stream or something like that. And we'll be like, Nouns Esports, sorry, Nouns, Nouns Esports has already been eliminated or something like that before top eight. So moments like this happen. And with this huge open bracket, there's just so much that people get to see and we have these two broadcasts now so you're actually able to see a ton of it uh bacon kello either one of you can jump in and start why don't you tell everyone about the open bracket broadcast that's going to be run bacon go for it buddy yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's right no one can see anyone but me <laughs> so sorry about that everybody <laughs> yes yeah uh, so the open bracket is going to be super cool, mainly because, of course, the teams that qualified for AS Cup, right, guys, were way back in February. So March has just happened and the landscape is completely different. Take NA, for example. Alter Ego is the team that qualified and sort of got invited straight to that group stage. But Alter Ego finished, what was it, fourth? last month so there's a whole wild different dynamic on top of that you've got the likes of gt and nemesis who did so good last month actually coming out for that open bracket so even the teams that have got those higher seeds have made it through to the group stage aren't technically the favorites are they kello no well it's the same story for eu as well you have for free winning the aos play-ins and then you have yala bingo who ended up winning the march cup so obviously they're they're going to be participating in the open bracket hopefully for a spot in the higher ranks there so i yeah it's just interesting to see how much it has changed and i guess considering aos play-ins that was the first tournament that we had for the ucs mm -hmm. circuit mm -hmm. yeah first thing of the year which i mean it's kind of, especially for all of these Western teams, right? They've been playing, but we're a lot rustier than all the teams in the e sort of the Eastern region of the game who have more tournaments throughout the winter and stuff like that. So it really was crazy that our first tournament of the year had so much weight attached to it where these teams are going to be qualifying for their spot in the AOS Cup. Obviously, the group stage of the AOS Cup. We have the open bracket that will feed into that group stage as well, which is going to be uh, amazing. So, Bacon, 
Uh, I don't know if you know all the details, but can you give people an idea of what it's going to be like uh, watching the second broadcast? Okay, so the second broadcast is, well, again, like, <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit flushed at the moment. Over on our channel, over on Unite Bow Hub, both on Twitch and YouTube, uh, Twitch, at Unite Bow Hub, funnily enough, over on YouTube, at Unite Bow Hub, just really super simple be tweeted out on the day just click from there but we'll be following all the swiss rounds and they are best of ones i'm pretty sure it's five rounds of swiss essentially mm -hmm. the way swiss goes is by power rankings kind of like seedings so if you win a game you'll face off against another team that'll win a game and keep going on should be roughly get about three wins and you should be safe to go through to the next round but there's a little bit of a terror territory where the bad teams you beat of course the further you'll be able to go and get a little bit more power ranking into that group stage which will also decide where you end up in those groups because there's only eight spots and we've got i think it's 24 teams signed up for the open bracket so it's quite dangerous yeah i mean uh i don't know enough about a swiss format what i do know is everyone who really loves tournaments loves a swiss format and uh, people who uh don't know enough about it like me are like yeah sure that sounds like an absolutely great format i'm gonna pull up for everyone who's watching this sorry for everyone who's listening but for everyone who's watching this i'm gonna pull up all of the teams that we have competing uh, in this open bracket right here and uh, we can talk about it a little bit so here are the open bracket registered teams everybody uh we have a through k does it not go a through l anymore a b c d e f g h i j k uh we have uh no l no l's anymore <laughs> Uh, we have All In On Black, we have Amnesia, we have Blazing, Libero, these are all EU teams, we have Brave Birders from NA, we have Capybabas from EU, De Croissants from EU, we have E7 Janus from Latin America North, we have Exile, GT, Luminosity, and Nemesis from North America, Nouns Esports, Outer Banks, Phantom Forces, Plush Keepers, Alternative from EU, we have Shin and Rode, and I can't, I think that's APAC East, we have, uh, uh, team Uwu from EU, Team YT from North America, Whopper Unite, and Yala Bingo from EU. So uh, again, I'm going to have this up, but I would love to hear uh, Doob Snacks looking at sort of this open bracket here. What are some teams that you have your eye on? There's like 80 of them that are good. Yeah, no. So the, the misconception here that I feel a lot of people have had is, well, the open bracket, we're just going to have eight powerhouse teams and then eight teams that make it through the open bracket. This is a absolute buzzsaw of a Swiss round you got to go through. I mean, there's a world where you have like the top 16 is literally like five more world qualified teams from last year, right? Like that is an opportunity to happen here. Um, you know, you got to look out for, of course, nouns forever on the revenge arc, I guess this year. But I mean, just from NA, GT, YT, Exile, Nemesis just won in March. Uh, Yala Bingo is the March winner. They're going to be there. You can never really count out LG. Um, and then you look at the fact that like uh, Giannis is going to be there. FA Brazil is going to be there. I mean, this is a crazy, crazy Swiss round. Uh, and I, I know Bacon kind of touched on it earlier, uh, but uh, I pulled up a Swiss uh, top cut calculator here to give round numbers for folks. Uh, there's approximately going to be one team that goes 5-0, and oh, three to four teams that go 4-1, and one, and then seven teams that go 3-2. and two. So if you're a three and two team, you better have caught those losses late in the Swiss rounds because there's a chance you bubble out here. Um, so this is going to be a tough, tough bracket. This is exactly sure. what, like every time it's explained to me and they're like, you better catch the losses late or you'll bubble out. This is why I can't handle a Swiss bracket. I'm glad other people are running this. And they, of course, did not ask me to have anything to do with managing the Swiss bracket. Kello, uh, what, what do you uh, like uh, what teams do you like out of this uh, open bracket here? Oh, there's too many to name here. So many that we've seen from previous years, but also, you know, just from March and the AOS play-ins themselves. One team I do have my eye on, obviously, they are not eligible for championship points, but Shin and Rude, which we mm -hmm. did see during ACL and everything, you know, having Shindy and everything, I am a little bit of a fan, so... It's interesting to see, you know, these 
team. So obviously Shin and Rude and then E7 Janice come in. They are the only representatives in mm -hmm. the open bracket for their region. So I'm really hoping one of these teams or both of these teams do end up making it in and just balancing out the NA uh, and EU, I guess, dominance uh, that we are seeing in this open bracket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously we would expect to see a lot of EU, right? I mean, this is their uh, home turf and it's going to be easiest for a lot of their teams to make it to something like this. But you have to love, as we talked about, the idea that this is essentially mini worlds right now. And I'm fully with you, Kello. I would love to see teams from all over make it into the group stage uh, and battle it out. Bacon, who are you looking at here from the open bracket? I, I'm I'm scared of that E7 Janice. We've all heard Zoinks, you know, gush over Rework Respawn, right, on the main broadcast. But E7 Janice took down Rework Respawn in a bracket mm -hmm. reset last month during March. So they're looking really good. Luminosity, of course, you can never count mm -hmm. out. They just seem to be the kings of land, right? Two worlds in a row. There are a couple of roster swaps, and there is that big question of how will Flareons do on that squad. That's going to be super exciting, but at the same time, Nemesis are looking good. I, I think right now I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little bit in awe of how NA and that Latam North team of E7 Janice are doing. And the EU have got to really step up. And I think the big question is going to be on downs because it's not really been their season so far, has it? Yeah, it's so weird having a super team, right? Uh, I think they have that unfortunate thing that Luminosity also has, where if you if you win, it's expected, and if you lose, everyone's like, "Wow, I can't believe they lost!" Like we're talking about some of the best players in the game, obviously. Nouns Esports, like if you were to look at this team on paper, you think they're going to ace every single tournament they hop into, but they've probably had the growing pains that are natural with a lot of these super teams. It was like I think it was the same thing that was going on with luminosity last season where it's like how do you balance all these powerhouse players uh on one team and as you just talked about bacon luminosity is a huge question mark i think first off they still have uh a lot of their components that made them world champions but yeah now they have these new you know roster swaps in their team i didn't know it was announced or if it's announced but i'm very excited to see flareons on luminosity flareons has been uh, someone who's kind of been around my community for the longest time. I would duo with Flareons. He is so good. Uh, and it's just so cool to me to see someone who's really risen from just sort of a, you know, one of those casual, like not casual, but like a ranked ladder climber to the point where they are playing with the world champions. I'm very stoked to see that. I have to say, looking at this open bracket, it is an absolute murderer's row of great teams inside of Pokemon Unite. It's so crazy. Um, for I, and I, I don't know if you, any of you, have the answer. Do we know who is playing on Team YT in the defender role? Does anybody know who's taking that Pika slot? Diff. I was, I figured it was Diff. Okay, so Pika Diff has taken that slot on Team YT. Obviously, Phil is not playing. We have two members of Luminosity no longer playing and those spots are taken by, is it Big Uzi and Flareons? Is that what it is? Yep, yep. Boozle and Flareons. Boozle are, uh, and Flareons. Angry, angry. And if you remember at NAIC, Boozle got a chance to be on stage and uh, was kind of a land demon for themselves. Uh, Ginyu Force was able to take down some big wins just with that land buff and he was a part of that. I want to talk about that actually. I think that's this is a great time to hop into the difference between all of the other competition that we see in Pokemon Unite and what we see in a live setting. You know, you see players like Overlord, for instance, who is, uh, uh, like, he is, this game's, like, what people look to as, like, our godlike player for the most part. Two-time world champion, mechanically insane. Uh, and on LAN, you, that difference is uh, even bigger right? It's even more of an opportunity for a player like that to show off. Kello, when you have got to, when you've been around some of the live events for this, like what do you see are some of the big difference makers between this and uh, an event where we're all playing uh, on ping and stuff like that? I mean, obviously being on stage is going to be a completely different experience than playing at home in front of your computer screen. Mm -hmm. You have that feeling, well, all eyes are going to be on you and your team, obviously, whether it's there on the stage or up on the screen, knowing obviously a lot of these people probably aren't content creators themselves or anything like that. So 
just that feeling of having that camera in your face can create these feelings of nervousness. Um, so obviously just trying to overcome that and all of the other things that are happening around, obviously in that uh, arena as well, it's not just Unite, you have all of the other games happening and all of the other noises and just, mm -hmm. you know, even as a caster, it can be sometimes overwhelming. But I think it's just a matter of obviously putting on those headphones, getting into the zone and just taking those deep breaths um, is, you know, that's really the strength that you're going to have to see from these players to overcome. Yeah, it, it is a lot. You're right. You're just like, you're going through the environment. You're kind of being, you know, walked through this backstage area. And then you have this place where you're waiting. And now you're on ice a little bit where you've got the nerves building up before your game. You have people walking around wearing ridiculous jackets who are trying to get your attention and stuff like that. Then you're ushered onto the stage in front of a crowd that is, first off, like hype biased, ready to go. Like they have a team they want to win. And I think a, a great example of how this live environment can affect teams. Um, I think momentum is even bigger in a live environment like this. We saw this at regionals last year between TTV and Luminosity. Uh, Luminosity, who went on to be the world champions, were the world champions the year before. TTV having to come from the losers bracket, but it felt like everything in that live space was channeling into TTV winning in that moment. And you're gonna see moments like this, of course, in uh, this live competition as well. I'm wondering what it's gonna feel like from the group stage, how that setup is going to look, if they're gonna be playing on kind of the world's year one tables or something like that. I really don't know. Uh, Bacon, I'm curious, w what teams do you think uh, are gonna really be able to turn it on in a live environment like that? For me, I, I'm looking at 4-3 right now in that group stage. They have really, really just rose to be the most consistent team in Europe, it feels like, and consistency on land. When you happen to deal with those nerves, when you've got players of experience as well on that squad, you know, like Zervas leading the charge, that for me could be the difference maker. But then you also have that passion factor, don't you? And where else you get more passion than Latam South or Brazil? Group D mm -hmm. is going to be crazy for that with Legacy and Fusion. And I think those are the two different stages. If you've got a team with nerves, that's where it kind of falls apart on land. That's when you need a big head on the squad, someone to be able to keep mm -hmm. everyone calm, be able to work up that team energy and get them going. And that's what we saw from TTV last year, wasn't it? Just that complete and utter like aura check over everyone else where they just completely went Super Saiyan. Yeah, you know, one moment that this uh, that that moment and you talking about that bacon reminds me of was also at Worlds uh, when we saw. I remember there was uh, what I'm blanking on Mazo's team name last year. What was it called? Zero Zero Nation. Zero Zero Nation going up against Nouns, like the most unfortunate but amazing group stage run in that had to happen at Worlds between the two like juggernauts from their region, and there was a moment between one of the games I remember where they cut to the cam on stage and Mazo and a couple of the other players, they were like smiling and laughing. And I remember in that moment thinking, oh, I think Nouns is done for. Like they're like this team is on stage, all the pressure is on and they are not even, not only like in the zone of like, oh, we're, we're playing well, but they're feeling loose and good and having fun. Like, oh, that was so unbelievably huge. And for free, like you were talking about, they're on an absolute tear. Uh, I feel like for free, it was, it's sort of the, the second team in EU. Uh, everyone would look at Nouns Esports and go, there's Nouns Esports, they're gonna win it all. And then For Free was like, no, it's actually us. We're actually the super team. We're actually the team that's gonna like dominate everything. And it feels like that feeling, that momentum, that like level of uh, excitement and joy that they could be playing with is gonna be amazing. What, what do you think uh, when it comes to the live event, Dupe Snacks is gonna be sort of a big difference maker? Zero ping, zero ping. Stocks on characters that uh, work in that arena go on the rise. So like Zorark is gonna be on the rise, right? We specifically saw it 
out of LG at Worlds last year, the amount of times they chose Zorark and just gave it to Overlord to carry the game versus what we saw throughout the season uh, was way higher. And that goes for all of these teams, you know, having a conversation with Lutano and he was like, man, just playing Gardevoir on no ping is excellent, um, you know, for, from just the land event at regionals last year. So no ping is a difference maker. And I think there's going to be a slight edge to the teams that have experienced that in the truest land form that this game has to offer, while other teams might have to just adjust like wow this is just a hair faster than i'm used to um and that is going to be again in a best of one situation in swiss that, that can be the beginning of the end for your squad so i think zero ping is going to be an interesting thing to contend with of course with all the other factors that goes with playing in person playing live and potentially being in front of a big big crowd zero ping is uh, what my answer is going to be for you, Cowboy. Yeah, I mean, it is going to be huge. Best of one inside the open bracket is chaos, right? I mean, Pokemon... It's ravenous. <laughs> it's it's ravenous. Uh, I think it, it's obviously not exactly how you would want it, right? I mean, if we had a bigger tournament, if we had five days, if we had whatever, we would want more time for these teams. I'm wondering what you all think, given a best of one situation, like what is going to be the the ticket that gets these teams you know to punch their way into that group stage i'm thinking just for myself if it's a best of one situation i'm playing insanely aggressive like i feel like i'm taking every edge i can i i think if you play scared a little bit especially near the end of some of these games you open up the opportunity to lose i would personally but this might be why i'm not competing i would personally be taking every opportunity to secure wins and secure the game i'm talking a few enemies are down i'm moving on rayquaza like the difference between the the feeling of a team that wants to ice their opponents out and the team that just wants to kind of slam dunk the ball right now and finish this thing. Uh, but for in a best of one situation like that, Kello, what do you think is going to be maybe some of the big factors between a team that makes it to groups and a team that doesn't? I guess that's the thing. There's no run back. It's all or nothing here. So obviously you're going to want to bring out the Pokemon that you are most confident with. Mm -hmm. uh, ensuring, obviously, that doesn't end up going over to the other side, but is it, it is going to be uh, the pig band phase during the Swiss round. Is that correct, uh, Bacon, as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the thing. You do obviously have... Uh, you don't get to switch, switch sides later on, so first pick that's where you have to make those decisions. Like is first pick more crucial than say the second pick? Because second pick obviously you have that ability to counter and you have that last surprise that cannot get countered as well. So I feel like second spot is in a, a huge advantage there, but I don't know. Like, I just feel like there's so many factors that go into this um, and just, yeah. I don't know <laughs> yeah no i well i mean obviously like a lot of crazy yeah. stuff is gonna happen yeah. too right but i think yeah. just as you as you were bringing it up i think you're a hundred percent right you will lose this entire tournament in draft i mean you will lose mm -hmm. this, this whole thing if you're not walking into these games with a strategy like I, I think about this often when i'm watching two teams play where i go oh uh, they're playing Luminosity's game right now. This other team is done for. Like, they, they, Luminosity is doing what they want to do. Or you insert any team right here. Like, oh, no, this is... Like, Nemesis is doing exactly what they want right now. This other team is done for. And whichever team walks into this match and they are playing their game and the opponents are trying to keep up with them, I think is going to be huge. And a lot of that's going to happen in draft. Uh, Bacon, thoughts on some of that best of one? Yeah, yeah, no, in, in that same sort of sense, I remember talking to Ven uh, back after the first Worlds, right? And they were saying, like, Luke, LG just did the research on other teams. Mm -hmm. Knew what they were wanting to bring into the games, like their strongest picks, and then made one or two counter picks dependent on that. And that was kind of like the big brain move for them, was to just know their opponents, having an analyst, because having an org kind of facilitated that right for them but here when it comes to the land you're going to know who you've got in uh swiss pre a little bit earlier you know you have a five ten minute sort of walk over to the table during that time get your phone out quickly look up that team put them into unite api and figure out what they're most likely going to be playing right because you need to know that information 
That's especially good. if you're second pick because you are near enough going to be forced into a counter pick scenario because as Kelly rightfully put first pick is so strong right now play what you're comfortable that means you become predictable a little bit yeah you absolutely do and you're kind of opening yourself up to what is you know you're letting the opponents know what you're about to bring out here for sure dubs next what do you think about draft in the best of one yeah, so I think I would split these teams in the bracket into two camps. One, one which would be like the long shots, right? Maybe teams that you're looking at here, maybe like De Croissants or Plush Keepers, Brave Birders, like teams that you are familiar with, right? But are, are don't necessarily have the repertoire that the rest of these teams. And then the other ones are like just kind of powerhouse squads. I think the powerhouse squads are going to lean very heavily into like okay we have a secure tool we have a decent support right we prioritize tank and then you let your solid play dictate kind of the direction of your central and maybe bot path attacker right and then i think some of these other teams that you're speaking to spragles are going to have to play their own own game and i think like just because i have the most experience with them brave birders is a team that has never played someone else's game totally ever yeah um and a Brave Birders team in this bracket in a best of one really has the opportunity to do some damage uh, to some good teams um, if they play their own thing. The other thing about Brave Birders this year, they haven't been on broadcast. But there's a lot of research you can do to Bacon's point about a lot of these teams that have made their way onto you know uh, Chris's stream or even on the main broadcast that you have at least... If you can't API them before your match, you've got at least a bank of information that you should have done research on before you step into this event. So in this kind of long shot pile of teams, I see one of two, one or two of them coming out just because they played their own game, they have decent research, and then they just stuck to their game plan, which a lot of these teams might not have an understanding on how to handle because they are playing a little bit more cookie cutter. They don't want to hemorrhage, uh, you know, uh, equity points into the hands of the other team because they're trying to be too clever, right? They're going to rely on their skill while the other teams get to do a little little bit more razzle-dazzle, throw more shit at the wall, see what sticks. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Uh, it, and it's, your, Brave Birders is a perfect example of that. You know, uh, they are always playing their own game. Another team that I feel like plays their own game cons uh, quite a bit is like Team YT. I'm not sure how that's going to look with this uh, new roster on Team YT. I know it's one player swapped out, but they swapped out one player and then they lost Muck. They got Otter. So the team's been like kind of like up and down a little bit with new additions. I'm really interested to see what they want to bring out. They're another one of these teams, as I always say, on any given day, they can beat the best team in the world. And when it's best of one and you're kind of being thrown the curveball that some of these teams want to throw at you it could be really really tough i want to get from everybody i want to move on here to uh, a few other things inside the group stage but i want to get from everybody a few teams from the open bracket that you're maybe excited to see move on or you think are going to move on i'll give a few predictions right here really quick i think you can never count out luminosity i think it's very likely that they can move on from the open bracket right here I've gotta, I've gotta see what happens with Nouns Esports. I would really like to see them move forward. Yala Bingo is so hot right now. Uh, I mean, it's like Hansel levels. They're so hot right now. They had a rough month and then they had an incredible month. So I'm really excited to see what they are able to do. And then uh, obviously the representation from Latin America North, E7 Yanis. I'm really excited to see that as well. But Kello, a few teams that you're hoping for or excited to see move on from the open bracket. Look, considering the results of March, Nemesis, Yala Bingo, of course. We've seen a little bit of A through K as well. So those Brave Birders, as you mentioned, and of course, E7 Janus as well. Um, GT, I think I love GT mm -hmm. as well. So I don't, it's mm -hmm. such, it's so tricky. There's just so many teams there that, you know, just to choose from, but there's obviously only a set amount of spots that they can fill up. So yeah, but just to name a few. Bacon, a few from you. Again, that uh, APAC East as well with Shin Rowdy is going to be an interesting one. But I think we're also sleeping a tiny little bit on Atalta Banks, right? They had a great mm -hmm. run back during March. Mm -hmm. And this is a team that we've seen them perform in stuff like uh, Zephyrs, Lands, and all of that. Like, it, when, it, when you're in those best of one scenarios, they could do real damage. Yeah. Dube Snacks? 
Yeah, just um, if we're if we're talking Homer vibes, I think a lot of NA teams have a chance to get into this top 16 and kind of make it like a home away from home type tournament. Um, but in terms of like just storylines, I want to see Nouns, I want to see Shin Rude, FA Brazil, and E7 Giannis. I want to see as well um, Outer Banks, like Bacon just mentioned, because if that was um, Kid Tanz's first tournament back, uh, I would hate to see what he's done with a month of practice with the same squad. Mm -hmm. um, so Outer Banks is a great uh, uh, injection of the storyline. And of course, you want your, your March uh, winners to be in there as well. So like Yalabingo and Nemesis. So and I would just like to see um, from a storyline standpoint, as many different regions make into this top 16 as possible. So we have a very unique scrambling for that big, big prize, which is the world's invite. Like at the end of this weekend, we will know our first team qualified and that is not nothing. Isn't that um, crazy to think about that? I mean, at this point in the year, we're about to have, which could be a huge advantage or a weird disadvantage uh, in, a, in a way because they might get kind of like complacent but we will know a team qualified for worlds the only team qualified for worlds like if like just think about this scenario since we're talking about eu for free wins nouns esports kind of size like has a sigh of relief because now all they have to contend with is yala bingo right mm -hmm. for like the championship points but on the other hand nouns esports would love to win and say okay now we've got four months to figure out what is going on within our team and how we can kind of knock those uh, weak spots out of our armor and make sure that we are geared up, ready to go. So like there's actually a benefit to not winning if another team in your region, another powerhouse team in your region does, but you don't want to leave it up to that chance, right? So like, it's it's super interesting, the dichotomy that we've uh, built into this event. Yeah, it's, it's so exciting. It's crazy that we're gonna have a team qualified for Worlds. I wanna talk about groups right now. I wanna talk a little bit about the controversy of groups. I'm gonna pull that up for everyone here uh, watching the video right now. This is the AOS Cup group stage. We have Group A is gonna be Alter Ego from NA against Antic Esports from OC. Group B, we're gonna have a Japanese team, Unite Holic versus Latin, uh, Latam North, Rework Respawn. Group C, we've got a Japan team, KS versus EU team for free. Group D, Brazil Legacy versus Latam South Fusion. So just taking a look at these groups right here, the first thing I want to talk about, of course, is Japan. So if you hadn't heard about sort of how all this played out, we have all of these regions, North America, Oceania, LATAM, North, South, uh, EU, Brazil, all playing for a spot in the AOS Cup. There were two spots that were not uh, accounted for moving into this AOS Cup, and those two spots were invited spots for Japanese teams, like top Japanese teams. I have a working theory that it was gonna be one Japanese team and a team from China if the Chinese beta was out and ready to go, uh, or the Chinese full release was out and ready to go, but that's just a you know, complete tinfoil hat on my part. So we have two Japanese teams inside this group stage, meaning a Japanese team could walk away from this ostensibly Western tournament, however anyone can sign up, but essentially a tournament for the Western teams with their spot secured to Worlds. I would love to hear uh, everyone's thoughts on this, kind of what they've seen as the, maybe the reaction in the community and what you think about these two teams. Uh, why don't we start with you, Dupes, next? Yeah, first off, to start off about these two teams, I mean, they are nasty. Yeah. Like, Copy Chons is an argument you can make for one of the best teams in the world. Um, Where are United they on Zoinks' power ranking? Are they number one? I think, I think they're first. I think they're <laughs> first. And I, don't, and I don't think that's a bad spot to have them, to be quite honest. Yeah. They are so sick. And they came out of nowhere, too, right? They're a team that have kind of have slowly been, like, in the hyperbolic chamber training over the last two years. And they finally stepped out. And they're like, you know what? We are pretty good at this mm. game. Like, Tomato, that kid's nasty. Anyway, so like Kabi I think it's a hyperbaric guy. chamber, by the way. Uh, it's a hyperbolic, you said hyperbaric, hyperbolic chamber. chamber. So it's just a, a chamber well, that's pretty absurd. Hyperbolic about the hyperbaric chamber. Let's go. Yeah, out here. Um, so yeah, both of these teams are sick. There's an. I mean, okay. You can make the thing like this is supposed to be a Western uh -huh. tournament. They took away our Western spots, so it should go. You know, for one of the Western teams. Uh, you know, win the tournament. 
What do you want me to say? Like, you're gonna have to face these teams later on if you qualify for Worlds anyways. I don't I don't understand this like path of least resistance. It always has to be the easiest thing going. I think it's great that we have as much representation from across the world as uh, possible. It legitimizes the eSport a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. It's not completely segregated from itself all over the planet. Um, doing something like this is a net positive. And I think getting the Japanese viewership eyes on this game, on this tournament, which otherwise they'd have no real purpose watching is a good thing so uh yeah i'm for it bring them along have as many teams as possible in here and scrap it out and earn yourself a world since so, like you're gonna tell me one of these teams if japan wins and they didn't earn that world spot you're gonna look at these teams that are playing in this event and you're gonna tell me well like they took a spot from the west no they earned a spot from the west and if you were that concerned about it Step your game up and win it. That's and where I'm They at. earned a spot into EOS Cup by the, uh, it was the East Asian uh, Champions League, right? Uh, so they not only went to the finals of the Champions League there, but they got the spot here. So they were the two best in their region. It wasn't just like po uh, Pokemon Company was like, oh, we need two Japanese teams to fill out. No, this was known. So there could have been a South Korean team or even a Taiwanese team in there. But no, these were the two best. And like I said, Kabe Chance went on to win it all in the end. So they're clearly good enough to be here. Yeah, they, I mean, these are these are great teams. I'm personally very excited for from me. I, I understand it from a player perspective. It can be a little annoying, especially, look, I, I'll be 100%. I don't want Japan to win one of these spots. Sure. <laughs> like, I want it to come home to North America or something like that. But at the same time, uh, I, I, I get where the players are coming from. But to make this a mini Worlds, this is very exciting. And I do want to see that level of competition. And if Japan is able to win, then hats off to them. They absolutely deserve it. Kello, what are some of your thoughts on uh, the group stage? And then, yeah, Japan being here in this uh, in this tournament. I think just reflecting what everybody else has said, as you mentioned, it's a mini Worlds. You know, this is just good preparation for the actual Worlds. These are teams that you're going to likely have to come up against anyway, so why not scope them out early if you don't end up succeeding this time round, but you do get to go and match the match up again uh at Worlds. Like this is all just preparation for them, you know? I mean obviously, yeah, world spot. Seems great and everything, but hey, you know, it's all for fun as well. And um, it's all good practice as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's for free now, actually, Kello. Uh, and Bacon, uh, I, I want to hear a little bit about your thoughts on, uh, obviously, the Japanese teams, but I'm pulling the bracket, uh, the group stage back up here, and I'd love to hear just some of your picks from this as well. Uh, if you'd like, I can read some of them off to you. No, 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 I've got it in front of me. And I think, I mean, we've covered enough of the Japanese teams. I'm not too worried about Unite Holic, to be honest. That Cabe Chancelo, they're scaring one of the top dogs. For me, I want to bring up Antic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Kello, they were kind of looking one of the weakest teams. We got the Unity Clash recently, and they, they did just okay within that, you know, being, but the issue was being beaten out by some of these uh, Brazilian and, and Latam South teams that were playing on high ping, you know? But for me, it's them knowing Knowing that they're a little bit the underdogs here, they're not really up to the level of the rest. So getting in two weeks early and boot camping. This is the team mm -hmm. that are doing the prep before LAN, aren't they, Kello? Yes, they have been there for quite a while, and I know they have been absolutely grinding it out. Um, and that's that's a thing, obviously, you know, coming from uh Australia over to EU when they did do the Unity Clash, I, I believe they probably would have been a bit jet lagged. So it's not just adjusting, you know, to the EU region and their player base, but it's just their body clock adjusting, making sure that they are prepped and ready to go. And they're not going to be jet lagged going into this competition <laughs> coming from the opposite side of the world. Yeah. Uh, I mean, looking at these groups here, I want to talk about each region a little bit as much as everyone maybe knows a little bit about it right here. Uh, we were just talking about OC, so let's like hang on them for a minute. We saw Antic Esports win, obviously, in February. Uh, and then last month, I'm blanking on the name right here, but we were all up late watching your broadcast, Kello. Who was it? Was it, was it uh, Ground, Ground Zero? Zero? Yeah, Ground Zero. Okay. That's what I thought. Ground Zero winning with some really... Uh, I, I got a like 
uh, I feel like I'm tipping my cap to everybody today, but I really <laughs> got to tip my cap to. I loved seeing like they had Scissor and Age of Slash and stuff like that uh, being used in their grand finals run and stuff. So I gotta, I gotta wonder. Do you think Kello Antic is the best representative from OC right now? I guess it's just a similar so story with NA and EU. Obviously, mm -hmm. each of these three regions have a different team winning in March. So it's really hard to determine considering we've only had two months of the competition. We know how much things can change within mere weeks, pretty much. We might end up seeing a brand new team uh, come next April Cup. So look, I think they are definitely one of the, the top teams in the Oceania region. Same with Ground Zero. I think Antic definitely deserve to be there as well. Um, and obviously this is just going to be their chance to prove that. Yeah, I would love to hear. Uh, Bacon, any thoughts about OC or would you, is there another region you'd like to bounce to? I, I think OC right now is in a little bit of a precarious spot because we also have Fury there. Big Mac during the off season as well was great fun, weren't they, Kelly? So it's kind of like OC is where is a small group? We're, we're finding it interesting with our open series where such a small group of really high level gameplay, but they're always trying to innovate to try and get one up over each other and they're always pushing each other. So it's great fun to watch because they also know how each other plays. So there's big mind games going on OCE and I don't think that's entirely going to carry over for Antics. They've got to really just get mechanically good in these two weeks that I've been here. That's an interesting thought. I mean, I mean what, you're, what you're talking about kind of reminds me of when I would be at my friend's house. Uh, sorry, OC, I'm not, I'm not trying to make it seem like this is this small. But I'm like, we're all at our buddy's house and we're all playing Halo every day, right? But we don't know what's going to happen when we go over to Kevin's house and we all play Halo at Kevin's house because we don't play the same stuff. You know, uh, and I think that could be happening a little bit in OC when the group is so small, like you were talking about, Bacon, you are counter picking individual players that you run into a lot. You are playing those mind games as you talked about. Will that be a huge advantage heading into the group stage because you're playing maybe a higher level or a different game? It's a really great question because they're going to run up into North America right away in Group A. Dupe Snacks, any thoughts about uh, OC or any of the other uh, regions? Yeah, I think your point about OC is reflective of what we saw of like NA at Worlds last year because like NA against NA smashes NA, right? It almost seemed like all of last year, everything was always um, up for debate between who was the best team, what was going on there. And then on the world stage, it just took one NA team to make it into the top eight. And then it just felt like they're on a different level because mm -hmm. they were almost like iron sharpens iron all season long, right? So there's a real potential that it cuts both ways. You either get so like developed into your own little, uh, little cycle that you can't break out of it, which means everything feels so foreign and you can't adjust, or you come out so far ahead because you've been forced to go so deep in the well to figure stuff out that now you have an edge like oh they're trying to do this but we already dealt with that four months ago we know how to handle that and then you just kind of pull that card and then you're able to to kind of counter and overcome so it's it's definitely a, a something that can cut both ways we'll see how oc which we'll see which way it cuts for oc in this event but i love to hear that antic has been uh in london um and doing a bunch and a bunch of um scrims uh in person with some of these eu teams that's that's a great sign for them and i hope all the best for sure yeah i mean this is those moments like from uh we get to do the broadcast and watch all of it i love what we get to do i will say the only thing that i would that i feel a little jealous of with the players uh, is that moment like getting all together and s like flying to another country and scrimming and like putting in the work I know it's hard I know it's it's a lot but man that sounds so fun so exciting like I I hope these players are taking an opportunity to kind of recognize how cool of a moment this is for them that they get to do this because man that is just that's so exciting and i really do think um you know as we just talked about the idea of what happened with luminosity it could the exact same thing could happen for any region but of course could happen for oc 
Luminosity had the hardest time against North America, and they showed up at group day two, uh, or not, or day two of Worlds, you know, the top eight of Worlds. They did not have a hard time. Like, I don't know however you would like to look at that. That was an absolute stomp from start, start to finish. They didn't have a, a tough time at Worlds. Like, maybe uh, it felt like they kind of had uh, some close games between... Um, which team was it from Japan they kind of had somewhat close games with? Uh, I'm blanking on it. But regardless... Um, we did lose one game yeah. to SAUL, I believe. Yeah, well, that was... Yeah, that, that was day, day one. one yeah. Uh, yeah, day oh, one they one. did. Yeah, true, yeah. yeah, day two, however, they... was It was a clean sweep, I'm pretty sure. But they had a couple close games with one of the Japanese teams. And I... I Wasn't it Omo? In their first time they faced them? Maybe it was. Really close. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe it was Abyssinian? I can't remember. I remember a couple of the... Jap uh, I thought it was a couple of the games I was not casting between Luminosity and one of the two... Because there were two Japanese teams that were in the top eight that both looked really good. Um, but regardless, uh, these teams, like, yeah, like Luminosity, once they hit that uh, top eight... They looked unbeatable and they had a lot of struggles in North America. So it's going to be really interesting to see what these teams do when they are playing teams outside their region. Uh, I want to, all of us to be able to talk a little bit about these other teams and these other regions. Uh, Alter Ego from North America. Obviously, they qualified in February. They did okay in March as well. They were really high on Zoinks' power ranking. Uh, but I'm interested to hear like, I, I'm it's weird you could show me any one of the teams from NA and they could be in that spot in my opinion like they're all that good I think uh dupes next what do you think about alter ego yeah I think they're great you can't undersell the power of JL uh this like one of the sickest supporters on the planet right um I love Alter Ego. I am right there with you. And that it's almost back to the point I was just making of how iron sharpens iron in NA. It's because the the gap between the best in NA and, you know, the eighth team in NA is has shrunk so much yes. in three years that now they are all I'm not gonna say all interchangeable, but they're all very close. So you, and on any given day, you'd be like, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me that GT won. It doesn't surprise me that Exile makes the final. You know, like, and all of these teams, like, oh, YT winning May last year, of course, you know, beating GT who's been on this rise. That's just where NA is. So while I truly believe in alter ego skill, I really believe in the skill of all the NA teams that have made the choice to uh, cross the pond and go battle in London. So um, I, I, one of, one of my, uh, I'll kind of spoiler alert, uh, one of my hot takes that I kind of put down is I think there's going to be five NA teams in the top 16. I Ooh. think they're going to absolutely Ooh. rank uh, uh, through. I think they've got a great opportunity. And I, it was, it, it's kind of, it came out of me not being able to decide which NA teams I would put in the top 16. Um, so I was just like, put them all, whatever, like full send, <laughs> why not? And everybody knows I'm a huge homer anyway, so it wasn't that big of a stretch. Uh, Kello, I want to hear uh, some of your thoughts here. It could be about Alter Ego, but just in general, as we kind of look at the rest of this group stage right here, is there any team that you see here that you think is probably going to win the whole thing? Or are there any matchups that you're super excited to see? And again, let me know if you'd like me to read some of them off to you here. Well, obviously, you know, as we spoke about it, I do have to cheer for Antic. But mm -hmm. for free, definitely another team that have been on my radar, having Gatlu, Sereyu on the team. Um, I know, obviously, Alter Ego as well. They played a spectacular uh, time during the AOS play-ins, and I think the players on there, obviously, Machizel as well, popped off. Um, so I'm really excited just to see those pop-off moments from these players as well. But I don't know. I'm really excited. I haven't really seen very much from Latin America, North or South. Um, so really interested to see where they fit into the mix amongst these teams. Yeah, I'm I'm with you with that. And I also, one for me that I really have my eye on is Legacy. Legacy out of Brazil. I feel like that... that Last year at Worlds, like, Brazil almost made it the whole way. Uh, and I would love to see something like that happen again here at the AOS Cup. I mean, uh, it, it, it could be, it would be so exciting. Like, I don't think there's a team, a single team that we're talking about that wouldn't be an insanely exciting storyline for winning this entire thing. Uh, Bacon, is there any team that you really have your eye on that you think 
looking at the group stage right here has the possibility to win the whole thing well naturally i'm going to be cheering for four free like you said dude that you go for your home region don't you but four free have been just outstanding mm -hmm. so far but They're sick. I truly think the winner of the entire thing is going to come from Group D. You look at you've got Legacy and Fusion, who already are absolutely goated. Fusion, uh, sorry, Legacy, uh, no, was Fusion, sorry. Uh, the only team out of the lot, like, you know, we're talking about these teams that got their qualifying spot and then didn't make March. No, Fusion did the double. And then you've got the top seed. That team that goes 5 and 0 oh from the Swiss is going to be in Group D as well. Iron, you know, sharpens iron. That is going to be the most difficult group. Winner uh, making it out of that is clearly got to be the best. Yeah, I'm taking a look here at the AOS Cup kind of group stage explainer right here. You can see what happens. So for instance, in group A, Alter Ego goes up against uh, Antic. The winner of that is going to move on to match three that would play the winner of match two. So those are teams coming from the open bracket. So everyone at home who's watching the video, you can kind of see uh, what this looks like right here and then what would move on to day two into like a top eight scenario. And from what it looks like, this is not not a reset bracket it's going to continue with the uh format from the year right where if you lose here in match five you will start in the losers bracket on day two correct yeah so i mean there's so so much riding on every single game which just seems to be the state of competition inside of pokemon unite it's crazy it's why every moment matters a lot every ray fight matters a lot it's just it's going to be so exciting. I absolutely can't wait. I love that we get the two broadcasts. It's going to be it's going to be so cool as a viewer. Like this is something that I would be so stoked for, like being able to go, "Oh my, I have to see what's happening uh in the open bracket. Like I got to see the Luminosity game and then switching over uh to the uh Unite broadcast on Twitch and be like, "I have to see, you know, what's going on with Antic Esports. Like they're up one game against Alter Ego." Like this energy is going to be so insane for the game i absolutely can't wait um before we sign off here i'd love to get any final predictions or final thoughts uh from everybody right here kello anything you'd like to say before we leave oh final predictions uh look we're gonna see both apex east and uh latin north so e7 genus and shin and rude make it through to day two i reckon they're gonna make it out of that open bracket that's my hot take <laughs> bacon any final thoughts or predictions oh, again like i said earlier about group d i have to reiterate that but again rework respawn are too darn good if they can finally that squad get the whole team to a lamb because that's been the issue throughout the previous years mm -hmm. they will be making a deep run definitely to grand finals for me dupe snacks buddy Listen, you've wanted more games. They've taken steps to bring you more games through this uh, open bracket qualifier. Do your part now. Tune in, right? Doesn't cost you anything to have multiple tabs open. Make sure that you're in both uh, both streams and uh, cheering on your squads. We're going to bring, bring you that action. It's going to be awesome. This is a this is a big step in the right direction. I I agree a hundred percent. You have no idea for you know you watching uh, at home or listening to this right now how important it is for people to show up and show their support and be hyped for this. Whether you're in person, by the way, if you can be there in person, be there in person. But whether That's you're it. in person or you're watching these streams, have them both up in different tabs. Uh, cheer for these teams be there unite esports it only exists and is only getting bigger because of the support from the community so absolutely make sure you're there uh bacon why don't you let everyone know once again where to find the open bracket stream yep unite bow hub over on twitch and at unite bow hub over on youtube it'll be the same broadcast on both they'll do a multi stream like what they'll be doing on unite esports on both twitch and youtube as well awesome uh, i want to thank you all for joining me thank you for taking the time kello i know it's what now 5 a.m basically your time yeah okay awesome <laughs> thank you all so much thank you for watching thank you for listening shout out to g fuel once again if you are picking up some g fuel or haven't tried it yet use my link in the description my promo code spraggles get yourself 20 percent off i love you all the aos cup is going to be nuts uh once again these casters are great i'm very lucky and thankful that you all joined me for this podcast and i can't wait to do the big show with you soon all right everybody goodbye i love you bye we did it. <laughs>